The big weekend show begins with a Fox News alert. Hello, everyone. I'm Julie Banderas alongside Griff Jenkins, Katie Pavlik, and Joey Jones. Tonight, a new message from Israel ahead of its imminent ground assault on Hamas. The Israeli military saying it will increase attacks on the Gaza Strip beginning right now to prepare for the next stage of the war. Tens of thousands of IDF troops mounting near the Gaza border as we speak, where 210 hostages are now confirmed as being held by the terrorists. And Israeli strikes, well, they are striking back after an Israeli-American reservist is killed by a Hezbollah missile fired from Lebanon. We're going to take you to Lebanon live in just a moment, but first to Lucas Tomlinson. He joins us live from Tel Aviv. Lucas. Julie, Israel's top general is very blunt. He says his forces will soon be entering Gaza and has ordered his men to prepare for ground combat. We are going to go into the Gaza Strip. We will embark on a professional, operational mission to destroy Hamas operatives and Hamas infrastructure. And we will have in our mind the memories of the images and those who fell on Saturday two weeks ago. Now, Israeli forces taking in some live fire training, but experts say what you're seeing here on the screen will bear very little resemblance to the urban combat those forces will be facing. Historically, when you look at urban combat from the famous battles of Hue to Fallujah, there's nothing easy about it, to put it mildly. Hamas will be waiting. They have likely booby-trapped the remaining buildings that have not already been leveled. One of the goals of the IDF, push Hamas out to sea and prevent Gaza from being a rocket launch platform and a plan to plan and a place to plan the worst massacre in Israel's 75-year history. Now, since the beginning of the war two weeks ago, the IDF says Hamas has had 550 failed rocket launches that landed inside the Gaza Strip, not Israel. And that included the deadly misfire that hit a parking lot near a hospital earlier this week. Now, earlier today, the first 20 trucks carrying humanitarian aid entered Gaza through Egypt. President Biden recently said here in Israel he's pledged $100 million to Gaza and the West Bank. We went to a morgue at an Israeli army base where some of the 1,400 Israelis killed by Hamas have been taken. An army reservist told us some of the bodies arrived booby-trapped. Babies had their heads cut off. She said she never thought she'd see atrocities worse than the Holocaust until now. A warning to our viewers, this is graphic. We've seen evidence of rape that is so cruel that pelvises were broken, bones were broken. Probably takes a lot to break a pelvis. Um, legs were broken, and this is grandmothers down to children. The one body that came in, they thought it was one body, and only when they took a CT did they see two spines. And they saw, they were able to see that these were a mother and a child locked in an embrace. Now, Julie, you mentioned Israel turning up the volume on those airstrikes in Gaza. Some of those Israeli F-15s that launch from here in Israel are only a few minutes away from their targets. They actually have to fly a bunch of miles over the Med right over there to properly arm those satellite-guided bombs. Julie? Lucas, as you know, there have been many delays as far as this Israel ground invasion. Uh, one of the many reasons could very well be, uh, and the president has alluded to this, uh, the evacuation of innocent civilians. Uh, what do you believe right now is the biggest holdup in this ground invasion? Well, President Biden uh, said when he was going on aboard Air Force One yesterday, when the question was posed, uh, would you like to see the ground assault on Gaza delayed in order to get more hostages released? We saw the release of those two American hostages, that a Chicago area uh, mother and daughter, uh, just yesterday. And the president said yes. Now, the White House later walked that back. Uh, but it, it's pretty clear that there is pressure from the White House and uh, European governments. In fact, the, the French President Macron is due here in Israel uh, in just a few days. Uh, there's pressure for Israel to delay that ground assault in order to attempt to free more hostages. Of course, uh, we've spoken a lot about the two Americans released. Of course, there's over 200 Israeli hostages that tonight are in captivity in Gaza. And, of course, you have 10 missing Americans, uh, many thought to also be held captive in Gaza, Julie. So, Lucas, great to see you. Uh, the Rafah border was opened to let aid into the Gaza Strip today. They're calling it life-saving aid to Palestinians running short of food, medicine, and water. Uh, this also came under, you know, as a result of pressure from a number of governments on the Israelis to do this. They were concerned about Hamas stealing this aid and potentially uh, smuggling in additional weapons. And have you heard anything about whether these shipments were actually inspected? 
or were they just pushed right through? Well, there's some reports out of Egypt, Katie, saying exactly what you just said, that they, they were not inspected. And, and officials also say there was no fuel in, in some of those convoys, of course, fuel that could uh, be used to, to help Hamas. Uh, but certainly that's one of the pledges that uh, President Biden made when he came here to Tel Aviv. He said he had put pressure on the Israelis to open up this humanitarian corridor out of Egypt. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was very clear, though, no aid will be going from Israel directly into Gaza. Lucas, it's uh, Griff, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the battle space you mentioned in your report. This may be the invasion of Gaza, similar to that in Fallujah, where Joey served, where I was, although in this case, it's uh, considerably more complicated because it's even denser. Talk to me a little bit about what they're going into and what you're hearing about how they intend to deal with that fighting environment. Well, just last night I was talking to some, some officials here on the ground, and they were saying that, you know, your typical Hamas uh, home, it's going to be like a kill house out of a Dr. Seuss book. Uh, I'm not exaggerating, just the difficulty level. You know, Hamas, uh, they haven't just had two weeks to prepare for this battle. They've had years. Uh, some of these tunnels uh, that run under Gaza and into Israel, by the way, uh, you know, some of them are, you know, over 100 feet deep, and, and they not just keep, you know, stores of weapons, but just, just the tactics. And, and as uh, Joey knows very well, just the difficulty of clearing a house, you know, going room to room, floor to floor, you know, all it takes is one Hamas operative hiding behind a door, hiding in a room, uh, maybe even, you know, five apartment houses down, complexes down to be able to uh, inflict pain on the Israeli forces. It is, there's just nothing easy about clearing a house, no matter how much technology uh, the Israeli forces have. Lucas, I want to turn the focus just a little bit. You're in Tel Aviv, uh, one of, not the largest city in Israel. Um, what is life like for Israelis? Are kids going back to school? Is there a contingent of Israelis that are back to normal life? Or is the entire country in a feeling of, hey, we're in, we're in war right now? Joey, the streets are much quieter than, than you see normally on, on, for most people when they visit here to Israel. The Carmel Market, just a few blocks away, uh, we were there just a few days ago. There's not as many uh, residents. Uh, we were in Jerusalem earlier today. Uh, you just don't see uh, the visitors, not just tourists, but just people. Most people are staying indoors. Businesses are shuttered. Uh, this is a country at war. Uh, this is, uh, you know, little Sparta, no question. And, and these are, this is a country that for decades has been fighting not just Hamas, but Hezbollah as well. And, and just to dovetail off that a little bit, you know, the Israelis say they can handle Hamas, they can handle Hezbollah. Uh, what they want to see from the U.S., and you saw with the, with the presence of the uh, Ford Strike Group and Ike uh, coming into the Med soon, is they think those uh, U.S. Navy warships is going to prevent World War III. Mm. Lucas Tomlinson, thank you so much for your excellent reporting as always. Stay safe. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.